Hello everyone, my name is Keenan and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today's gonna be a little bit of a different video. Thanks to all 7,000 of you now that have subscribed to my channel. It's going to be all about you today. Smart, beautiful viewers at home. I really appreciate all the likes, comments, DMs, emails that all of you have been sending me since I started this channel in October. And that's why I really try my best to reply to as many comments as I can. Because honestly it's just really so amazing to me that anyone takes their time out of their day to watch my videos. So there's a lot of questions that I see that are asked amongst all of my different videos that I have now. So today I'm going to be answering 15 of the most common questions that I've been getting since I started my channel. And before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any more videos from this guy in Hawaii talking about engineering, personal finance, and just life here in the islands. And just a huge thank you to all of you out there who have been liking and commenting on all of my videos. It really helps YouTube push my videos out to a greater audience and it really helps my channel out. So I just want to say I really appreciate all of you out there. And with that, let's go into all the questions that you have been asking me. All right, so I have my laptop here. So number one, like what is the difference between a construction management degree, construction engineering degree, civil engineering degree, structural engineering, all that kind of stuff. So I completely understand everyone's confusion. And I actually kind of blame myself a little bit for some of that confusion as well. So like in a lot of my videos, I'll interchange kind of my job title between like construction management, construction engineering, and civil engineering, project engineering, and all those kinds of terms. And a lot of that is just so that I can get found in the YouTube algorithm. But there are some small distinct differences between all of them. So when I think of like an actual civil engineer, I'm thinking of somebody that creates civil drawings for a project. So that'll include stuff like your grading plans and your contours of your groundwork. It'll include your sanitary lines, your storm lines, and maybe stuff like pavement, sidewalks, things like that. A structural engineer is in charge of maybe things that are above the ground. So if you're doing a building, the structural engineer will design all the columns, they'll design all the suspended slabs. If you have any sort of bridges, that's more of a structural engineer's thing. And then the construction engineer will focus more on the actual build of the project. So that's more of really what I do. I don't necessarily do any engineering per se because I'm just the builder. But a lot of times construction people will hire professional engineers to maybe design formwork and more of like the means and methods of constructions. But your focus on engineering is specifically about the means and methods of building. And the way that I view construction managers are people that are like third party organizations that represent the owner of the project that oversee the general contractor or the inner workings of the construction on the job. So that's kind of how I see the different roles in each of them. And that kind of differs from the degrees that you get. So like a civil engineering degree will cover civil engineering, will cover construction engineering, and will cover structural engineering. Similar to construction management, you'll learn a lot that is very applicable to the general contracting side. And you may not be considered a construction manager, but you're in the construction management industry. So hope that clears anything up. And it may be a little bit different depending on where you live and how you're operating in the industry. But that's how I see it here in Hawaii. So number two, what kind of software do I use for my job? So a lot of people reference like that 3D modeling program that I showed in my day in the life video. For, but for the most part, most people that work at my job are dealing mostly with just emails, maybe like Microsoft Excel spreadsheets, some sort of scheduling software, whether it be Microsoft Project or we use Primavera P6. And then if you don't have your own drafts people or if you're in charge of making your own drawings, you may be doing things in programs like AutoCAD. Because we try to implement our things in a 3D model, we'll use Revit, which is a little bit better at importing 3D things. And then the actual clash detection software that we use is Navisworks, but it's called Manage. It's all by Autodesk. But there's a potential that you could go through your project engineering career and not use AutoCAD, Revit, or Navisworks. And I would argue that you don't necessarily need to master any of these things before you actually enter the industry. M maybe reading emails, but you know. Because your software may be company specific, so like if I get really good at P6, but then I switch to another company and they only use Microsoft Project, it doesn't really matter. So it really depends on the company that you're gonna work for at the end of the day. So number three, how do you get a job in your industry or my industry? So for me, the best way to get a job is through internships. Uh, I'm very big and I'm a big proponent for construction specifically. You have to get experience to know if you actually really want to be a part of this industry. It's very tough. There's a lot of hours involved 
And when you do an internship, you can get a taste of really what your work-life balance is gonna be like. Or some people argue the work-life imbalance. The higher stress that comes with the industry, the type of people that you're gonna to have to deal with. These are all things that I think are very important to know before you actually get a job. And then once you do your internship, get that experience, a lot of times that'll funnel into a full-time offer. And maybe even if you don't get a full-time offer, at least you have experience on your resume that another company will see and see you as more valuable than someone that just went through college and didn't work at all. That's how I got my job. I only really had two summers before I actually got my full-time offer before I had my senior year in college. But to me, that's the best way to do it. So four, if you want a job in construction, so you major in civil engineering or construction management. Well, maybe I'm a little biased because I have a civil engineering degree. I think that if you have the option between the two and you like engineering, you should take the civil engineering route. I just think construction management is a little more niche than civil engineering is. So if you get a civil engineering degree and you don't wanna work in construction later on, it gives you more options outside of that. Whereas if you go into construction management and you don't really like construction, I wouldn't say you're stuck, but you just have a very specific degree. Now the construction industry in itself is very far reaching. And even if you wanna start in construction, you could probably get another job that's loosely related. And just having that experience is very good for companies in different industries as well. Some bigger co construction companies will look at GPA. So if civil engineering is not really for you and you know that you're gonna struggle academically, probably it's better if you're really sure about construction to go into construction management because it'll likely be a less academically rigorous course load. So number five, how do you deal with the work-life balance slash imbalance? And that's a pretty funny question that I saw on one of my other videos. He said something along the lines of like, how are you gonna find a wife if you're working all these hours? And it's a real thing. I mean, for the first few years that I worked in construction, I didn't really go out, but it's also not really my personality to like go out to bars and clubs and just like meet women. So I'll talk about both of these. So to me, work-life balance is all about what you really want in your life. So even though I work 12 hour days, maybe 14 hour days, or maybe I work seven days a week, it doesn't really affect me too much because that's my priority. I really enjoy what I do at work. I'm very passionate about learning more about the industry. And that's just how I wanna spend my time. But I would argue that some people, and probably most people, don't want that. They probably want more personal time on the weekends or maybe they want to coach their son's soccer practice. And that's why I think your career really needs to line up with what your priorities really are in life. And so for me, probably later on in the future, my priorities will change. Maybe my work hours will shift a little bit to accommodate those priorities. But as of right now, I don't really feel like stress or anxiety just because of the amount of the amount of work that I put in. And that's why I think it's so important to have clarity in your industry before you start. And then in terms of relationships, meeting people, things like that. I mean, yeah, it is hard to go out and meet people when you're working 12 to 14 hours a day. Because at the end of the day, yeah, I'm pretty tired, I'm pretty spent. But again, when it becomes a priority in your life and you really wanna meet that person, you'll find ways to make the time. So number six, what are my thoughts on cryptocurrency and like Tesla stock. So, so a little bit different. I know most of you on this channel are here for like my engineering content, but I also am pretty passionate about personal finance, investing and things like that. And right now the hot topic is about stocks and crypto. Um, personally, I just started researching crypto. My, my personal investing philosophy is that I don't really wanna invest in anything that I don't almost completely understand. So crypto is one of those things that I'm still trying to learn. I still don't really understand how crypto actually has its value. Like I know Tesla said now they're gonna take Bitcoin. So now to me, I can see how crypto can be traded for another good or service. I also understand that there's some value in having a decentralized currency. And with people's distrust in government and things like that, I can understand how that can be appealing. So probably in the coming months, I'll probably do a little bit more research. But my personal philosophy on crypto is that I'm only gonna invest or put anything in crypto that I'm willing to just lose. And stocks like Tesla and things like that, I think it's very important to understand the industry that you're investing in. I believe in Elon Musk. I think that he's a very hard worker. I admire the way that he operates. And he's proven time and time again that you don't bet against him. I know, I understand that Tesla's more than just a automotive company, but right now it's trading at a value that's like way more than any other automobile company out there. So personally, I don't put my whole life savings in Tesla, but do I think that 20, 30 years down the line it will be successful? As long as Elon Musk is around, in my opinion, I think that it'll continue to grow. But again, when it comes to investing, really understand what you're doing, where your money is going. And if you're investing in something that you truly don't understand, you just have to be okay with losing that money. So number seven, how did you buy a house so early? Early. So again, part of my investing mindset, uh, I 
don't really spend a ton of money. So when I first started out in my engineering career, I lived at home, so I had I had a bunch of money saved up so that I could put a down payment on my home. This home right now, I only had to put down 10% as part of a first time home buyers program. Um, but the timing just kind of worked out. It was a very good value deal, and that's how I got my first place. And I, again, I think real estate is a very good investment to be in, especially here in Hawaii where property values always tend to go up in the long run. So number eight, how do international students get civil engineering jobs in the United States? So unfortunately, I don't have all the answers to this question, but it's asked a lot. I don't know all the different obstacles and hoops that you need to jump through in order to work in the US from a different country. So whatever company that you're applying to, they would have to have all those measures in place in order to hire an international applicant. And if they don't have all of those things in place and all those methods, if you think about it from the company's perspective, it's pretty unlikely or I guess the odds are a little bit against you as an international applicant to get a job because they would probably just rather hire domestically so that they don't have to go and create all these different programs and find all these solutions to these obstacles if they don't already have them in place. Which I know is really tough to hear, but that may just be the reality, but I don't know. But if you have all of that in place, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to apply in the United States, and hopefully you guys can get your opportunities out there. Number nine, should I get a master's degree? So I have my master's degree in civil engineering. If you talk about it from an academic perspective, I don't believe that my master's degree gave me any knowledge that really helps me in my day-to-day -day job. I view my master's degree as more a tool in the tool belt, so maybe if I ever want to go to like a higher level position, a lot of times corporate companies care about those kinds of things. But what I did and what I suggest other people do is I did my master's degree while I was working so that I could get it partially funded by my company. I'd be making money and starting to build wealth on the side and I would be getting actual industry knowledge, which to me will get you way further in your career than any advanced degree in this construction industry. So number 10, do you need an engineering degree to do your job? No. To me, my job is all about effort. Construction is an experience-based industry. It's an effort-based industry. It's not something that a lot of us grow up knowing. And to me, the effort that you put in on a day-to-day -day basis is not something that any degree will show you. I really believe you can be very successful in the construction industry without any sort of frilly degree. So number 11, what is it like living and working in Hawaii? So I love Hawaii, I love the weather, I grew up here, my family's here, and that to me is enough for me. Relationships are a very big deal in Hawaii. It's really true that everyone knows everyone. You, when you get into the construction industry, you start to see the same people on every job. Hawaii is very expensive, however. I wouldn't say I got a bunch of hate, but I got some, I guess, discouraging comments in my video about how much I spend in a month in Hawaii. And it's pretty true, like Hawaii is very expensive. It has priced a lot of people out. It's very tough for anyone working minimum wage here in Hawaii to even buy a home. A lot of times people are forced to work multiple jobs and it's just the cost of living here is so high. But I don't know, for me, my family's here. I love the culture here. I do want to raise a family here. And it's Hawaii, you know? So number 12, how much money do I make? So I may make a video about this, breaking down my income, how I spend it. So if that's interesting to you, feel free to comment below and let me know. But right now, the way my company is set up, I have a salary, I have a bonus, and I have a company stock dividend that comes out every year. And all those three together puts me over six figures. So number 13, that's eight. <laughs> so number 13, does it matter what age I get into the industry? Uh, to me, no. So I would say at my company and from what I've seen in the industry in Hawaii, a lot of the project engineers are probably in their 20s maybe, maybe mid to late 20s. So being like 30, 40 is kind of a little older for that position. It's So that's why it's uncommon and it kind of makes sense, right? Because there's a lot of hours in construction. So usually people that are in their 30s and 40s, they'll have families, kids, and they can't afford to be spending 60 hours at work every day especially when you're trying to grow in the industry. But if you're okay with that, if you figured out your work-life balance and it's something that you want to do, I mean, go for it. Like I said, construction is 99% effort. So number 14, does it matter what kind of degree I get in this industry? No, kind of similar to the engineering degree. Do you need an engineering degree? Again, construction, experience-based, effort-based. Um, if you have a passion for building, if you really want to put in the time to learn, humble yourself, learn from the guys in the field, I mean, you'll do well. It doesn't really matter what degree you have. It just may be tough to get your foot in the door, but again, I think if you explain yourself about why you're applying for the job, introduce yourself, put your name out there, 
I think people will listen. Or at least you can get an internship that will then put your foot in the door and lead to a full-time job. And number 15, what does it take to get a job in Hawaii? Uh, to me, the biggest thing is relationships. So when I got my first job here, it was an internship at a company that I didn't really have any relationships with. But from that job, I got this job that I'm in currently now. And then the people that I met in my industry have branched me out where I got multiple job offers from different companies. And that's just how it works here in Hawaii. If you do well and you make a name for yourself, you put in the effort and you just are a good diligent engineer in the industry, a lot of people want to hire you and your reputation will take you a long way. Well, that's me responding to your comments. If you enjoyed this kind of video, if you like this kind of content, please let me know in the comments below. Again, I really appreciate all of you out there engaging in my content. It means so much. So as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And don't forget to use my link below to get two free stocks from Webull that could be worth up to $1,850. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video.